Good evening guys, this is Chris at DNGRMS Photography and I'm doing a quick screen photo today just to show some uh, skills that you can use in Photoshop just to add some motion uh, to something that's static. Um, we're going to look at a car, and a very, very particular car. Um, it's one of my old Lego Technic cars uh, and on the Fro Knows Photo website, Jared Poland's website, the weekend theme this week for 19th, 20th? Yeah, 18th, 19th, 20th, uh, the weekend of November um, was toys. And I thought it was a perfect opportunity to get out one of my favourite toys from my childhood, childhood, which was, of course, uh, Lego Technic. And um, drag the car out, we've got uh, a nice array of photos here, some nice static ones. And what we're going to do is we're going to use uh, some Photoshop uh, filters to add some blur, some motion blur and make one of these shots down here look like a panning shot. So this is a photo we're going to use um, and what we're going to do is we're going to edit it. If I just turn this back, put these settings back so you can see where I started and where I got to. So this is where we started with the, with the photo. Um, and we're going to look to end up somewhere around there. Okay, so this is this is obviously where we started. Um, shot uh, with my new Nikon D90. Got it on uh, Saturday. Very very impressed with the upgrade from the D3100. Um, it's the the clarity, the ISO capability of it is just. Unbelievable! I was absolutely staggered by um, the the difference. So, I can recommend anybody if you can get hold of the way I did it was a second hand D90. If you can get hold of a second hand D90, you can pretty much swap a good quality second hand D90 for your D3100. Uh, my 3100 is on a famous website, uh, auction website at the moment, uh, and it's pretty much covering the cost that uh, that my D90 cost me. Okay, so let's get uh, into this pet photo. Uh, as I was saying, it was shot with my D90 uh, using a 50mm uh, at 1.8 um, and I probably should have gone to 2.8 really. Um, ISO 500 and uh, well, it was shot at 2.8, my apologies. Uh, and at 1,000th of a second. Okay, so very, very quickly we're just going to edit this and see if we can get back to where we were, uh, add a little bit of vibrance because I love these yellow, uh, add some clarity as well because there's no um, no details here that are going to be lost from that and we're going to add a tiny little bit of warmth as well um, and one thing we can do if we click on the temperature but temperature icon here, we click on that we can then plus and minus to increase or decrease the temperature in minute detail so we're going to drop it there should look all right. Um, you'll see from the histogram that the exposure is pretty much spot on, um, even though the car is black. And we've got to be careful of that a little bit, so we're just going to bump the fill light up a fraction just to bring out some of the details into black as well. Uh, bring it down, look at the tone curve, and have some strong, strong contrast on the tone curve. And also, what I want to do is just drop out the red and the orange from here, just a fraction uh, on the HSL. So if we go to saturation and select the red here and we can just pull back a little bit on the red and what we can also do on here if we put that back to zero we can use our selective color adjustment so if we click on that we can then select any color on the picture here and then drag it the saturation down so I'm moving my mouse or my Wacom tablet down and you'll see um, I'm pointing at the screen uh, you'll see on the sliders there it's moving both um, attached to that colour that I'm moving, so we'll just drag that back just a fraction so it just takes a little bit of the distraction away. Okay, um, and we're going to do a fraction bit of sharpening, let's select the wheel that I was focused on, uh, sharpen up, mask it off. We only want the edges really, and we're just going to put the noise reduction up a tiny little bit, and that is going to be our image we're going to work with. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we right click on the image oops, uh, and go to edit in Photoshop. So it's going to drop it over to Photoshop and it should open that up now. Uh, give me two seconds. And there we go.
Now if we just go back to Lightroom here and just minimise that. Don't like that back getting in the way. Look at that. Formula One car in the background as well. Uh, right, so what we're going to do in here, we're going to add two different types of blur to two different parts of the photograph. What we want to do is we want to blur the background um, linearly so it looks like it's uh, being panned across and we also want to blur the wheels spherically. Okay, so we're going to add a radial blur to the wheels and a motion blur to the background. Okay, really, really simple. First things we're going to have to do, make a duplicate layer of the background. There we go. And what we can do now is see if we can just select, and it should be pretty straightforward with a quick selection tool, I think. Uh, just select the car very, very roughly. Um, if you were doing this yourself, you'd probably spend a little bit more time than, than I will on this one. Uh, but quick selection tool up here. And we'll just drag around and select all around here like this. Do, 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 do. There we go. And that is a pretty good selection. Let's add in here. There we go. Uh, and let's add in that bit around the back as well. Okay. So we've got that there. Now, what we can do, this is the way I like to do it, uh, if we click on this button down here, it turns a mask into, or sorry, it turns a selection into a mask. I'll just move this piece of paper out of the way. Put my hand down. Uh, and then we can add our add to our mask. So if we select our paintbrush here, uh, da -da -da, make the brush slightly larger, zoom in a fraction, uh, and then we can add using our black brush. You'll notice I've got black selected on the on the colour over on the left hand side over there. We can then add to this mask anything that we need and we just need to add this in as well. So make the brush a little bit smaller using the square bracket key. And then we're going to hold down shift just to make that a nice because I've got a Wacom tablet, it's being pressure sensitive as well, which is where that came from. Don't need to be too accurate around here because it's going to be blurring. Background, no, oh, don't like that bit there. It's going to be blur blurring the background anyway. So, just really, really quickly, just scoot that in there. And we just want to, I'm just going to add, because I think that will be a smart, if I can keep that nice and sharp, a uh, little badge at the front of the car. There we go, pop up headlight on the far side, pop up headlights rule, and there we go. So that's going to be our car that we're going to use. You'll notice I haven't worried about what's happened with the wheels, and you'll find out why in a second. I've just missed a little bit of yellow down there. Just add that in really, really quickly. There we go. Okay, uh, so that's how they're now. If we can go back to our selection. And we've got uh, all that outside, remember? All the outside is selected, so the car is deselected at the moment. We're actually selected the background. If we click on the layer mask icon, and uh, that, that was a layer mask. Then it will create a layer mask of the background. So we've got the layer mask out here. Just drag that down. If we click off the background now, you'll see we've just got the car on a layer. You'll see I haven't noticed about the wheels, so let's do the wheels now. What we're going to do is we're going to take a selection from the background layer of the wheels. And for that, we're going to use a circular um, selection tool. Um, I know these wheels are circular, so I can go into the centre if I hold down Shift and Command. Sorry, Shift and Alt. I should be able to draw out a, s a perfect circle. Select the wheel there. I might just nudge that selection slightly over. Uh, and copy and paste that. So Command C and Command V. And we'll add it onto a new layer. And exactly the same over onto this wheel. Shift and Alt to get a centre. If I, if I'm just show you now, look, you can see the marching ants around there. If I take my finger off Alt, it doesn't centre the circle. So if I put my finger back on Alt again, it centres that circle around where I originally placed my thing. I place the cursor, and if I take my finger off Shift, then it doesn't constrain it to just a perfect circle. So you can make ellipses. So that's why we're holding down Shift and alt. Okay, so same again, so we're going to copy that and paste that onto a new layer as well. Now these are the layers, or well, these are the um, ones that we're going to use our radial blur on. So we're going to hold down and select layer number two, which is our rear wheel. We're going to go to filter, blur, and radial blur. And we want something around 
possibly a little bit further. Let's go to about 25, 26. I'm just looking at the how it's how much is blue in there, and I want to keep the quality as best as I can. Okay, so if I click on OK there, that should just blur that rear wheel. Hello, hello. There we go. Okay, and then we can click on uh, layer number one, uh, which is our front wheel. Deselect that layer there. Select this wheel. And do the same thing again, radial blur. Click. And yeah, so we've got our two wheels blurred now. Now if we can if we turn this layer back on now, you'll see that the car is on top of those. So if we drag this underneath those two wheels, we've now got a car which has its wheels turning. Okay, but obviously wheels turning, not much happening with the background. So let's sort the background out now. So turn that turn off our other layers and this background here. Now, if I blurred this, if I did a motion blur on this, I'll just show you very, very quickly. If I do a motion blur on this now, motion blur, 241 pixels, click OK. If I then motion blur that, turn that back on, you'll see I've got the actual motion of the car, or sorry, the car is actually also blurred, which we don't want. Because um, obviously if you're panning, the car is going to be crisp, um, it's just going to be the background that's going to be blurred so let's take that off and what we're going to do is on our background layer here we are just going to smudge so selecting our smudge tool here just going to smudge with quite a large brush with quite a high strength 66 will probably be alright uh, we're just going to smudge these parts of the car out of the way Okay, and this will then get them out of the way of the Radio, uh, the motion blur when we start adding that on. Okay, and we might just do the roof as well, squeeze the roof in. And that might get caught as well, so let's just squeeze that in. There we go. Um, and that, I would imagine, maybe just up here as well, just to make sure that doesn't get caught. That will be, or oh, that should keep the car away from any edges and stop it protruding when we do the blur. So let's do that blur again. So motion blur, uh, let's just go through from the beginning. Motion blur onto this uh, and you'll see that it adds that um, preview straight away. We can change how fast the car is moving, so not moving at all. Moving a little bit, moving quite fast, moving a little bit faster. Now that is absolutely flying. We don't want it to be going that quick. <laughs> Can be a little bit silly, so I'm guessing somewhere around 170, 200 will be. I'm gonna leave it around there. That'll do 2 204. There we go. So click OK, and then we've got a blurred background. And you'll remember that we've got these two layers here, uh, plus the copy of the car layer that we did. So if we turn on the car layer, we've now got a crisp car. Okay, and if we turn on each wheel, we've now got the blurred wheels as well. Okay. And one thing we can just sort out, um, as we blurred uh, the background, you'll see just around the wheels, the wheels have gone white. So exactly the same thing as we did before. I'm just going to get this smudge tool, make the brush a little bit smaller, and we're just going to smudge the background layer in behind these wheels just to hide that white look. And the same on this side. Dink, 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 dink. Slide it in, slide that in there. Uh, so if I just turn that off again, you'll see that it's it blurred the inside of the wheel, and now I've just pushed them in out of the way, so it doesn't, it's not seen. Um, and also just around here, look, you can see that you can just see where I didn't quite capture or didn't quite select the uh, tire tread. So if we go up to our car layer here, turn that off. You see, there's a tire tread. Um, and what we're going to do is just burn that tire tread out of the way. So a smaller brush. Exposure, oh, 50 will be do, it would be quite a harsh exposure. We're just going to expose or darken everything behind there just to cast it away and make it less obvious. And you'll see I've just caught, just didn't quite get the selection right on the front wheel either. But let me just hide that like that. And now that is our sorted and um, filtered motion blurred car. And the last thing we're going to do is a creative crop.
time just to add some speed and make it elongated as well. And there we go. Spot on. Love it. Um, what I need to, let's just sort out, just go back on that one uh, because we crop into this. I think it's just, just not level. So let's just sort out the level of it as well. It's better. Just looking, lining it up to this brick line here. There we go. And then just move that out of the way from the top of the frame. Give it a bit more space to breathe on the bottom. Hit the tick. And we have our finished picture. And I'm just catching, just catching some white out here. Look, so let's just pull, pull in that side there. And pull in this side here just to cut that white out. There we go. OK again. It's not Tetley today, actually. It's actually Yorkshire, Yorkshire Gold, a uh, really rich tea bag. Anyway, um, there we have it. So adding some motion to something that would already be uh, would, that would be static, uh, and I think it's great fun to add it to a toy car like this as well. So if you've got a Lego car or you've got a Matchbox car or one of those big Borrego one eighteenth scale cars, get outside, whack it on the pavement or on the road, um, and have a go at this. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I hope you enjoyed watching and um, please check out my other videos as well. There's plenty of uh, work on Photoshop, a few in Lightroom and I'm looking to do some more on the general photography as well. Thank you very much guys. This was Chris at DNGRMS Photography and I will see you later. Take care.